Lord, I honor you. Lord, I adore you. Lord, I magnify you. This morning, check the glory. This morning, check the glory. Check this morning, check the glory. Check all the worship. How can we forget, oh God, your great, your great power that manifested in this place? How can we forget the Holy Ghost that moved all over this building this week? In the name of Jesus, how can we forget the safety you gave us, oh God? Traveling every day, coming to ownership conference. How can we forget? Oh God Almighty, you are worthy of all the praise. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all adoration. Lord, receive all our praises. Receive all our praises. Receive all our praises. Receive all our praises in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive all our praises in the name of Jesus. Receive all our praises in the name of Jesus. Receive all our praises in the name of Jesus. Maso Nalaba. Le Shandalados. Le Kalamande Sados. Mashalalalados. Le Kalalalalados. Mashalalados. Le Kaliamandalados. Le Sokalamares. Nasolalalalados. Maso Nalaba. Le Kalalalo Sendalaba. Le Brasatalados. Masse Kelebos. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Nothing I lay my hands upon shall be impossible for me. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nothing shall we lay our hands upon and shall not prosper. Why? We have received sound teachings this week from this conference, from this altar. We have received sound teachings, direction, wisdom. And therefore, whatever we will do from now henceforth, shall never fail shall never fail shall never fail nothing you will lay our hands on shall be impossible because whatever we do God has blessed it words have been spoken over our lives and now God is going to move and make sure that none of his word return to him void in the name of Jesus we are going to pray this morning. Oh God Almighty, help us not to take your words for granted. Help us not to take the teachings we received here for granted. I will put your word to work in the name of Jesus and I shall prosper. Open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Open your mouth. The word of God planted in our spirit this week shall not go to waste. The word of God planted in our hearts and our minds this week shall not go to waste the word of God planted in our lives this week shall not go to waste because we will not take it for granted we will not take God for granted we will not take his servants for granted let every word proclaimed over my life bring profits to my life in the name of Jesus let every word proclaimed over my life bring profits to my life in the name of Jesus, let every word I receive the success to everything I do, whatever I lay my hands on, whatever I find to do from now going forward shall prosper, shall succeed. I shall not fail. 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 Shall not fail. In the name of Jesus, whatever my hand finds to do this week, I shall not fail. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. For the Lord God Almighty is my strength. is my strong tower. Nothing shall be impossible. In the name of Jesus, whatever I do from now going forward shall succeed, shall prosper, shall succeed, shall prosper, shall succeed. In the name of Jesus, nothing shall be impossible in my life this week. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. 
In Jesus' name we pray. And lastly, we are going to pray and declare that every miracle we have received this week shall remain permanent. Shall remain permanent. Every healing, every open door shall remain permanent. In the name of Jesus, let joy flow like a river in my life. Let peace flow like a river in my life. Let healing flow like a river in my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Come on, pray that prayer. Every miracle in my life as a result of ownership conference shall remain permanent in the name of Jesus. Every miracle in my life that came as a result of ownership conference it shall be permanent every healing shall be permanent every healing shall be permanent every healing shall be permanent every open door shall remain permanent in the name of Jesus nothing shall be closed in my life nothing shall be closed in my life oh God Almighty let every prayer prayed here work work in my life in the name of Jesus let every prayer prayed here work in my life in the name of Jesus let every prayer prayed here work in my life in the name of Jesus let every prayer prayed here work in my life in the name of Jesus Oh, we give you glory. Father, we adore. We adore you. Father, we adore. We adore you. We lay our lives before, before you, Lord. Oh, how much we love of you. We lay our lives. We
worship, we give Him the glory. Come on, somebody give God, give God, give God the best praise that you can give him. He's worthy, he's worthy, he's mighty, he's omnipotent, he's a good God, he's a gracious God, he's our Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, oh, come on, come on, somebody, come on, be found the best praise that you can give him. Hallelujah, Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we clap hands for Jesus? The King of Kings he is. Hallelujah. We're going to exalt his name in this place this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah.
up in this place hallelujah hallelujah sitsi umo cheho e fuli minyamo umo cheho e fuli minyamo hake ay 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 sitsi umo cheho e fuli minyamo umo cheho e fuli minyamo hake
grace that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power if we are. There is a way. Him. Thank you, Lord, that we can praise you. 
Thank you that we can praise you in your, in your house and in your presence. Just begin to bless him, bless him, bless him. Let your focus be on him, let your focus be on him. Lord, we bless you for you are great. You are great, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you honor, Lord. We give you honor.
you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to House of Treasures Ministries. Hallelujah. Please, saints, do help me honor and welcome our general overseer and his beautiful wife, our mom, a daddy of the house. Hallelujah. Help me honor him. Come on, church. Help me honor our father in this place. We honor you, sir. Help me also in that same light to honor our grandpapa and our beautiful grandmama. It's been such an honor to have you with us. Thank you so much for being here. And of course, our uncle, Pastor Ike Nwanze, who is here again. Thank you, so We honor you. Now, before we move any further, we have special guests in our midst. If you're visiting House of Treasures Ministries for the very first time, kindly do rise to your feet. We would love to give you a warm welcome. Any first timers? Oh, they are. There they are, church. Wow. Church, if they're sitting next to or around them, do help us make them feel welcome. Given to you now by the ashes is a small leaflet. Please do fill it in with your very correct details and drop it in the offering basket in due course. We would love to keep in touch with you. Welcome to House of Treasures again. I'd like to greet all pastors, deacons, deaconesses, leaders, and their spouses. And to our online viewers across the globe, welcome to service. Won't you help me celebrate them, church, in this place? The vision of the house is to raise an army of believers to take over their world. And the mission is to distribute the treasures of God through the preaching of the word of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you have made it to the last day. Come on, you ought to give them glory. You have made it to the last day of the ownership 2022, except, sorry, 2022 Ownership Conference, hallelujah, titled Supernatural Enlargement. Are we excited in this place? Amen. On to our general announcements every Sunday. We have a celebration service such as this one from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. On Mondays, we have premarital counseling with Apostle Felix. Do note that the commencement date will be announced in due course. On Tuesdays, there's counseling with our senior pastors. Please note that these are by appointment only. So if you are in need of counsel, please book an appointment with the church office or call the church office on 011-943-6102. Do note that walk-ins are strictly prohibited. Call the number again on 011-943-6102. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study midweek services from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Fridays, the youth meet here in the auditorium. For, they are live youth, yes, they are live youth services from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And on Saturdays, we, the church at large, meet here in the hot auditorium for our prayers. And they are from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And straight after that, the evangelism team meet for short prayers, then go out in the neighboring areas to win souls for Christ. This is all from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And for our special announcement, parents do know that there is no Sunday school today. So do ensure that your little ones are well looked after throughout the service. That will be all from the announcements. Do enjoy the service and have a fantastic Sunday.
bless the name of the Lord. Can we just worship him one more time? You can stand to your feet as we just begin to bless him in this place. As we fill the atmosphere with our worship. Fill the atmosphere with our worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise, oh God. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all. You are great. Hey, say it's your breath. In our love, so we pour out. Hey, yeah. It's your breath in our love, so we pour out. Somebody lift your hands and say, "Great." Jehovah, no one can 
up your voice and let's give God praise this morning. Father, we worship you. We adore you, Lord. We give you the glory and the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's your holy name, Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to welcome at least seven people and tell them you made it. You made it through the conference. You made it. You made it. Yes. Congratulate them. Because their life will never be the same again forever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise his holy name. Amen. One more time, give Jesus praise. And you may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Amen. What a glorious week we have had. I mean... Uh, uh, can we just do something? Let's, let's rise again on our feet. Just in one minute, I want you to thank God for what he did in your life. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Let us be like that one leper that came back to give glory to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we give you the glory for all you've done. We give you the praise for what you've done in this week. We thank you. Oh, what a beautiful and wonderful conference. What a life-changing conference. Thank you, Father. We give you all the praise for everything that you said to us. Every miracle, every blessing. My God, for every prophetic word you released on our lives and over this ministry. We give you the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worship. And the church say, one more time, give him a best God bless you you can. Hallelujah. Thank him with your clap offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. And all the time. All right, you may be seated. Quickly, we have a few things to do this morning. But first and foremost, as our custom is, we would like to pray for those who had their birthdays in this week. If your birthday was between Monday and today, can you stand on your feet? Stand on your feet. Oh, so many of them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you all. Happy birthday to you. Hip hip. We don't want to ask how old you are. We know you are still 16. Amen. Praise God. Church, if you are around them, let us pray for them. As you keep standing, stretch your hands towards them. If you are around them, let us bless them. Let's bless them as a church. God hears the prayer of the church. The Bible says Peter was locked up in prison and prayer was made unto God by the church. I want you to say something about their destinies. Say something to God on their behalf. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for our beloved ones who had their birthdays in this week. Lord, we come before you and we thank you for their lives. And we now bring them before you, Father, to declare that even from this day forward, the hand of the Lord comes on you strong and stronger in the name of Jesus. Declaring that this next year of your life shall be the best you have ever experienced. That God will lead you, God will guide you, God will preserve you and God will protect you. That no devil will cut you short. We declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper. I speak the blessing of the Lord over your life and pray that this enlargement starts in your life and will not end in this year. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Happy birthday. We love you. Amen. Celebrate them one more time. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Do you have your tithes and your offering? I want you to bring out something for Jesus. Let's offer to him this morning. I don't have to read scriptures anymore for you to give to God. Amen. I believe for every responsible child of God, you ought to bring something to his house when you come to worship. Amen, somebody. Then in the scripture said, I will not come before God empty-handed. And then David went ahead and made it even much more. He said, I will not give God that which cost me what? Nothing. Say amen. All right, with that in mind, I want you to release your offering to Jesus. Let us give him our tithes and our offering this morning as we honor him. Lift it up before God as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you. We honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for this privilege. And Lord God of heaven, as we lift up our tithes and our offering, thank you, Father, Lord, that you are a multiplier of seed, that nothing that we plant in the ground ever remains the same. The Bible says that except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. It dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Therefore, we decree as the seed goes into the ground of the kingdom, Lord, may it bring forth much fruits in our lives. He said, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. Therefore, Lord, we declare the reaping anointing upon everyone and declare that our seed shall be multiplied according to your word a hundredfold. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, over to your choir. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Oh, you are faithful. Yes, you are. So faithful in your ways. You are glorious. You are So, so glorious in your way. Hallelujah. Lord, yes, you are glorious. Yes, you are. You are faithful now. You are faithful. Yes, you are faithful. In your
for the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, choir. God bless you. All right. We'll call you back when we need you. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Man, I'm exhausted. I tell you something. I need a holiday. I need a break, man. I tell you. Praise God. Well, this morning, let's honor our grandpa and grandma. Please, let's, let's honor our, my spiritual father, brother. Let's honor them. Let's honor them. Apostle Anselm Madubuko and Mama Emmy Madubuko. Please celebrate. Is that the best church? Let's celebrate them. Daddy and mommy, thank you so much. Thank you. We can't thank you enough for taking your time to come out and be with us. We know how busy you are, how your schedule is. But you decided almost a week plus you're going to spend it with your sons and daughters. We are truly, truly grateful. Um, we don't have words to express our gratitude. But all we can say, can everybody say, Papa and Mama, we love you. Say it louder. Say it louder. We truly love you, sir. We truly love you, ma. Thank you so much. And to my dear friend, Pastor Ike Wanze from Houston. Wow. You are just a good man. You know, you are a good person. You know, your, his heart is gold. Please, let's celebrate, my friend. Thank you so much. He was the best man at my wedding. What an awesome man. Amen. Now, all the leaders and the workers of this house, can you please stand on your feet? I just want to, all the leaders, the workers, please stand up, stand up. Every leader, every worker, I want to celebrate God for all of you. Thank you for your tireless input to this ministry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for taking leave from your work, from your businesses, to make sure that this conference is a success. Thank you so much. We truly, truly appreciate you. Please, one more time, let's honor the workers and the leaders of this ministry. Thank you. May God bless you. God will reward you. God will honor you. The God that has called me to ministry will elevate you. You will be partaker of this supernatural enlargement. And God will keep you alive to see your testimony come to pass. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you. God bless you. Please, you may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, before I go a step further, there is somebody that I want to truly just reward this morning and honor this morning. Uh, you know, when we built this building, I went through so much stress because I was directly supervising this building. 
But this time around that we did the extension and the, the youth hall for overflow, my younger brother, biological younger brother, Chooks, took over from me and he ran all the errands. Where is Chooks? Where is he? Please, can you come forward, you and your wife? Chooks and Mary, please come. Come. Please, can you come up the stage? Come. You know, I, uh, many pastors, uh, their younger brothers are a problem to them. But Chooks is a blessing to me. I have never seen this kind of commitment. Chooks lives here after everybody is gone from church about 3 o'clock. Service closes sometimes at 12.30. He lives here two, three, making sure everything is in place. During this conference, he was living here 4 a.m. I, I, I don't know how to explain the kind of gift he is to me and to this ministry. And I, I, I know you are my younger brother. He's number, what number are you? Five, right? Oh, yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that old, but uh, yeah. So he, he's number five in our family, but he serves me as his spiritual father. He didn't worry that we came from, there is no familiarity that we came from the same womb and that we ate from the same plate, we slept in the same beds, but he honors me as his spiritual father. And I want to thank you. Mary, thank you for giving up your husband to serve this ministry. To do what you do. Because if you were giving him hell, he would not do what he does in this church. True single-handedly supervised the extension and the building we did before the conference. In two months that we did this extension, or three months, there about two to two and a half months, Chus barely was sleeping. He was here, left his business, left everything he does, and made sure he was here every day from early, took all that burden and pain from me. And Chooks is not on salary from the church. He's a volunteer. Many people have approached him and say, why can't you tell your brother to pay you a salary? He will just ignore them. He's done this with a pure heart. So this morning, as your, as your spiritual father and your elder brother, I just want to honor both of you. Here is a check of 30,000. I want you to take Mary for holiday. God bless you. I love you as my brother. All right, put your hands together for them. Is that how you celebrate Jesus? Celebrate God for their lives. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now we have just one more assignment before we get into the word of God. This morning, God, um, not long ago, God gave us instruction to raise at least a minimum of a thousand workers in 2022-23. How many of you know now with our conference, it's almost getting to a point where We'll have to move it to the stadium. Hello. We are getting there. So, um, I mean, we can I don't know. We will extend the building till we extend to the road. Amen. No. So, we, we are trying to raise a workforce. It's a vision for next year for this ministry. To raise a thousand workforce. So, therefore, today we will be ordaining new pastors in the ministry. And then we will also increase the size of our deacon boards so that we can now raise more leaders and more workers. 
Amen, somebody. So on that note, there is uh, four people that will be ordained pastors. And um, the chiefest among them is my dear precious wife, Pastor Bulelwa Oko. Please, can you just come to the stage as you hear your name? Can you just come to the altar? Come quickly, please come to the altar as you hear your name. Well, she was a pastor in Christ Embassy. Now that she's here, y'all know what I'm saying? We need to make sure the oil on this house comes on her. Uh, she, needs, she needs this fire. Praise God. All right. And we have Deacon Pumlani Mtetwa. Please put your hands together for him as he comes. And then we have Deaconess Lily Chimburu. And then, last and not the least, is Deacon Benjamin Nsibi. We have watched them over the years, especially for the three of them, we have watched them over the years serve God in this house consistently uh, without any evil rep report. And um, we've watched them be faithful to God and be faithful to God's servant over this house. We've watched them love on people. We've watched them lead their departments and led, it, led with excellence. And so today God is elevating them to the fivefold ministry under this house. And um, before we pray for you, I'm going to call Daddy to come and pray for you. I just want to give you a charge that you, all of you will, if you do, your response will be, um, yes, I do. You are not getting married, but it's what? Yes, you accept and you do. Amen. Now, um, the Bible says that if anyone desired the office of a bishop, um, I don't think you need, they need mics. Please just, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, stand there, stand there, stand there. They would need it. I think we'll do that one, one. The Bible talks about if anyone desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing. And then he now began to give us the qualities of someone who holds that kind of office. Today, God is calling you into the fivefold ministry as a pastor. And, um, We've recognized the grace of God upon your life. We've seen you serve God. We've seen you in leadership. We know that the hand of God is on you to lead his people. To lead, especially. Let me say that again under this house. We have ordained many people and they think that they have become prophets and prophetesses. You know, like one time, Papa, we were ordaining, I don't know if you remember, Daddy. Some years ago, we were ordaining pastors and you prayed for them and you said, if you leave this house, everything I declared is gone. They thought you were joking. Many of, all of them that left, they have been irrelevant. And they left without permission. No, I'm leaving. They just, one of them sent me a message, an SMS. He said, today is my last day. Another one said, I should re God said I should release him by 1st of July. That God said. I said, ah, where am I? Uh, okay, if God said, no problem. You know, many of them left like that and they have made a shipwreck of their destinies. And so today, I want you to know that we are ordaining you into ministry to serve under this house. And if there is any reason why God would allow you to go and begin something out there, you should wait till he tells me. Amen. Amen. Don't do what others have done. You need to learn from their example. I like what Apostle Joshua Selman said yesterday. He said, you either learn from others or you become the people people will learn from. Amen, somebody. But don't learn from people's mistakes. It's very important. So today you are being 
ordained as pastors to serve in this house. And I want you to know that God is trusting you with this and is committing you with this. And I'm trusting you with this because I'm giving you authority right in the presence of God's people. So I want to, in the presence of all these people, read this charge. And each of you will answer to that one after the other before we pray for you. And before I pray for you, I want your spouses to come up. All right. In the presence of God and all these people, we reverently appoint you his servants as we anoint you as associate pastors in House of Treasures Ministries. And I charge you before God and before this congregation that you keep faithfully the covenants now you are about to enter between you and Christ Jesus. That you preach the word in season. Be instant in season and out of season. That you feed the flock of God as assigned by the general overseer of House of Treasures Ministries. That you abstain from all appearances of evil. And of every unscriptural practice as contained in the word of God. That you live a blameless life. That you be a husband and a wife or a husband of one wife and a wife of one husband. Amen. And you have to say it in this day. Amen. 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 That you give yourself to hospitality. Amen. That you be apt to teach. That you do not give yourself to wine or be a striker or greedy or filthy locker or a brawler or covetous. That you be patient and one that rules their own house well, that you have your children in subjection under law, under the law, and by so doing that you may know how to rule the house of God, that you do not regard yourself as being sufficient in yourself, but remember at all times that only God is your sufficiency, and it is he that can make you a perfect pastor, and that you protect and honor all men. And lastly, that you may purchase for yourself a good reward. Now, I'm going to ask, do you accept this charge? Benjamin Nsibi. Yes, I do. Please, can we have the mic? Everybody needs to. Yes, I do. Put your hands together for him. <laughs> Lily Chimburu, do you accept this charge? Yes, Apostle, I do. Amen. Humlani Mtetwa, do you accept this charge? Yes, I do. Bulelwa Oko, do you accept this charge? Yes, I do, sir. All right. Please, can you go on your knees? I'm going to invite Daddy. Please come. Let's, please uh, just come in your honor, sir. I want you to first and foremost declare words over them before I pray. Now, look at me, please. 1 Kings 19 and 16, the last phrase says, And Elisha, the son of Shepherd of Abel Mehola, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Your ministry starts in his room. That's right. That's right. Doesn't start here. Don't look for this place. Your promotion starts in how faithful you are as a person. That's a mistake a lot of people make. When they're anointed pastors, they think, I deserve the pulpit. The first assignment is to him. And he will be the one to direct where next to go. Elisha was anointed a prophet to minister to Elijah. In his room. Then it was Elijah, when it was time, that threw up Elisha. That way you'll be blessed, he'll be blessed, and the body will be blessed. Amen. So, Father, we pray that all they need to serve this house and your man be released unto them. That the spirit of rebellion be far from them. Amen. That you will not allow men going down meet with them. Amen. That you will give them dreams and instruct them 
in alignment with the vision of the house and the way to go and to be a blessing and to prosper this house in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. These things and more we have prayed and declared over you that you will be faithful. You'll be faithful. We release that grace for faithfulness and fruitfulness in the house of treasure and to the apostle Felix Oko in the name of Yeshua Amashia. Amen. And all of us say what? Amen. Amen. Now, Father, upon the authority vested on me as the general overseer and the senior pastor of House of Treasures Ministries, I therefore anoint these ones into ministry to serve as pastors under this ministry. And Father, I declare that as I lay my hands on them and anoint them with oil, that the grace which you have lavishly bestowed on my life that it begins to find full expression in their lives. That the same honor you have given me, I place that honor on them. That people may hear them. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you are anointed today, you will run this race with ease. You shall not be a disappointment. You will not fail God. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of the devil is broken off your life. The enemy will not make you a Satan. You shall not be a Judas in this house. You will not be a betrayer in this house. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will serve God and serve me and serve God's people faithfully. The hand of the Lord comes on you strong. And God will give you today the spirit of revelation. That as you study the word, God will reveal to you the mysteries of the kingdom. You will be able to feed yourself and feed others. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare right now, as you are anointed, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. In the name of Jesus. Receive that grace now. Now, in the name of Jesus, receive that grace now. I release it upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare that from today, the same honor that God has placed on me, I place on you. That you may serve God faithfully and that people will hear you. May you stand as an example and a testimony of the believer. May God help you. With this assignment. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help you. In this assignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. As your spiritual father. I bless you from my bowels. I bless you from my bowels. I bless the work of your hands. I bless your families. I bless your children. I bless your finances. I bless your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare and decree, you will not die prematurely. The enemy will not cut your life short. Every arrow fired against you will come through me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray today that none of their families will suffer because of this assignment. I declare you shall be great. You shall be great. You shall be great. You shall be great in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're going to keep kneeling.
Ladies and gentlemen, I announce to you, Pastor Benjamin Nsibi. Please celebrate him, celebrate him. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Lily Chumburu. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Pumlani Ntetwa. Pastor Bulelwa Oko. All right. God bless you. I look forward to serving God with you. Forward to you holding my hands. I look forward to a great future. I love you all. God bless you. Please, you may put your hands together for them. Quickly. Amen. All right. Now, the following people, as I mentioned your name, please, I want you to come up the altar quickly. Brother Ntlamolo Goodman, please come quickly. Put your hands together for them. Brother Loazi Ntlanga, Brother Chuks Oko, Brother Busiso Chilubani, Sister Lorraine Kashani, Sister Sue Madikhetla, Sister Jabulile Mapiri, Sister Anoria Makamo, Brother Molefe Lengana, Sister Gladness Mochadibani, Sister Colette Ntetwa, Sister Tinyiko Maluleke, Sister Terry Ann Oliphant, Brother Victor Felix, Brother Norbert McDonald, please can you all stand? Put your hands together for them. Amen. Now, these are going to be joining the deacon board of this church. Put your hands together for them. Glory to God. Now, I want you to know that... Um, as the church is growing and the church is increasing, uh, the apostles at one time when they saw that they began to get busy with many other things, they said they should choose from among them faithful men, men that were full of wisdom. And so that they should set them so that they would be able to serve the tables and they would give themselves wholly or fully to Oh, yes. Oh, I jumped, I jumped one name. Brother Larry, please can you step up? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think I must have dropped a name. Amen. Oh, yeah, I did. I skipped your name. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Amen. So the, the apostle said, we will give ourselves wholly to the, to the ministry, to the word of God, to the ministry of the word and prayers. So we are setting you here today as deacons so that you will make the work of ministry easy for us as pastors and that you will serve God's people with all diligence. The Bible gave the same qualification or qualities for anyone that desires the office of a bishop and a deacon. Almost the same qualification. That you have to understand today that as God is elevating you to this position to serve God's people, to serve God and his people and myself, that you do this with all diligence. Can I hear an amen? All right. Now I'm going to read this chart quickly to you. 
I want you to pay careful attention. You have received of our Lord Jesus Christ to serve in House of Treasures Ministries as a deacon or as deacons and deaconesses. According to the word of God, the word of the apostles, that pastors may give themselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. Now, I want you to listen to this charge as I read them out to you. And obviously at the end, the microphone will be passed from one of you to the other to tell us that you will do what we are about to read to you. Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God, the perfect doctrine of salvation, rejecting all contrary beliefs? Do you vow to be a servant, first to Christ, then to God's servant and to his church as an active deacon and deaconesses? Do you vow to be an assistant in House of Treasures and to, to do to do uh, to all you can support and to do sorry and to do all that you can to support the leadership of this house that is set over you and over this vision? Do you vow to be consistent in your start, study of the word, showing yourself approved and a workman unto God? Do you vow to lead God's people? by your own example in faithfulness and service to God in holiness? Do you vow to be faithful in performing your duties and magnify the one who has called you to do this high and holy office and to remain humble for the rest of your life? Do you do so? Please give them one mic. To, the mic. Yes, I do. Thank you. Keep going. Yes, I do. 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 Amen. Put your hands together for them. Please, can you go on your knees? Glory to God. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for these precious ones that you have chosen. Lord, to serve under this ministry as deacons and deaconesses. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and upon the authority vested on me as the general overseer and the senior pastor of House of Treasures Ministries, I therefore today anoint you with oil and declare you now to serve under this house as a deacon. To serve under this house as a deaconess. To serve under this house as a deaconess. To serve under this house as a deacon. 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 To serve under this house as a deaconess. To serve under this house as a deaconess. To serve under this house as a deacon. To serve under this house as a deaconess. 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 To serve under this house as a deacon. To serve under this house as a deacon. Right now, as I lay my hands on you, I declare a transference of spirit. And I declare you will serve God with excellence. You will serve God with boldness. You will serve God faithfully. You will serve God with humility. You will serve God with your finances. You will serve God with your family. You will serve God with the work of your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be a disappointment. You will not be a failure. You will serve God willingly and acceptably. I bless you as your spiritual father. And I declare from this day, the grace of my life finds expression in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you will not be a failure. You shall be a success in all you do. And today, I bestow honor upon you. Men and women will listen to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I said they will listen to you. And they will obey your commands. In the name of Jesus, I bless you as your spiritual father. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may rise to your feet. 
All right. Congratulations, Deacon Larry. Congratulations, Deaconess Gladness. Congratulations, Deaconess Lolo. Congratulations, Deacon uh, Sibusiso. Congratulations, Deacon Loazi. Congratulations, Deacon Choose. Deacon Ntlamolo, congratulations. Deaconess Sue, congratulations. Deaconess, uh, my head, Anoria, come on now. Congratulations. Deacon, congratulations. Deacon Molefe. Deaconess Colette, congratulations. Deaconess Jabu, congratulations. Deaconess Terry, congratulations. Deaconess uh, uh, Tinyuko, congratulations. Deacon McDonald, congratulations. I love your surname. I think I prefer that one. Amen. God bless you. Deacon, God bless you. Amen. All right. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome your deacons. You may go back to your seat. Please put your hands together for them as they go. All right. Praise God. Well, today is the last day of ownership 2022. My God, it's been an awesome week. And um, today we have Daddy that will be blessing us. Can we all stand on our feet? Amen. Hallelujah. Church of God, this morning we are privileged once more to have God's general in the house. A veteran in ministry has traveled all over the world preaching the gospel has fought fights, has conquered giants. God has called him to nations. And we are so, so privileged to have him as our spiritual father. So today, church, I want you to lift up your voice with a clap proffering. Let us welcome the ministry gift of my spiritual father, Apostle Aslam Madubuko. Is that the best you can offer? Thanks, Dad. Congratulations, House of Treasures, for yet another successful conference, ownership conference. Congratulations. God has been good to you, and the days will testify. Just watch out and you know that your lives will never be the same. Amen. A word to these uh, Dickens and pastors. You know, one thing is for your daddy to release his blessings and his word. Another thing is for the word he released to find expression in your lives. That is your responsibility. And if you want to be successful in this ministry, you must grow unto him, if you know what I mean. You've got to let his spirit fill you. You cannot serve effectively here with another person's spirit. You cannot. That means your cars must be filled with his summons. You've got to hear him, drink from him. Don't drink from another system. If you, if you drink from another system, you'll be, you'll be strange. You'll be, you'll be spiritually strange in your own house. So you've got to make sure that you are not floating, but you are flowing. Flowing starts from being connected to him and drawing from him. That way you find that your growth will be swift. And the people will also receive you. And they will see him in you. When you stand here, they say, that's another daddy. And they'll be comfortable with you. I've seen many assistant pastors. When they stand on their father's pulpit, they look like other pastors. It never works. Okay? The Lord will help you. In Jesus' name. Well, it's, it's been... A week of fireworks. Just lift your hands like your daddy said and thank the Lord for making it possible for you to see the beginning and the end of Ownership Conference 2022.
The blessings must follow you. The blessings must follow you. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you be. I have a very short word that God gave to me and I just want us to pray Father in the name of Jesus I commit this next hour to you please glorify Jesus and Jesus alone in Jesus name you may be seated once again on behalf of my wife and I we say thank you Apostle thank you Pastor Bulelwa congratulations you guys have taken good care of us giving us so much love, respect, and honor. Thank you so much. As you do unto us, men will do unto you. You keep rising. You keep growing. You keep enlarging. I call it the ever-increasing enlargement. An enlargement that will not expire. An enlargement without end. That shall be your portion. And this ministry, from the bowels of my calling, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. There's no failure here. There's no failure here. House of treasure. I said there's no failure here. The Lord our God will help you. And you'll make a statement that the world will read and, and shake and marvel at your strength, at your wisdom, at your understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. I bless your homes, number one. May God bring peace in your homes. May, may your homes be fruitful. May your uh, careers experience the touch of God. May your businesses receive the breath of God. May you keep rising. May favors come from the north, south, east, and west and fill you up with the greatness of God in the name of Jesus Christ. No ancestral powers will be able to at any time stop you. Uh, afflictions and evil program for the future will not find you. I remove every enemy in the future. Every enemy in the way. Every wickedness prepared and planted uh, with a date to manifest. I, I dethrone and cancel. You will not know evil and you will continually be stronger than all your enemies in the name of Jesus. You'll be so strong and your children will also fight your enemies at the gate. No battle will get to your home. They will stop at the gate in the name of Jesus. If you can stand up, everybody just stand up right now and lift your hands and just pray in the spirit. Everybody, understand how to receive. Ne learn how to receive blessings. Pray in the spirit. Pray loud in the spirit. Oh. For there's no one else like you. Keep praying the Spirit. Who is faithful and the true? Oh, my love, my love, my own. Is a test. Come on, to pray. Make it loud. Era masoya, only you. Ah, rida bakosha nake. The four. Ria bashanta nake sobra haya. For there's no one else like you. Ah ya, osha kaya haya. Who is fair? Shake a 
Mandele de Boa. Ela vai a Boa. Oh, Marido Chacas. My heart and my life is a testing bone. Oh, yeah, my heart. I am a Oh, that only you And only you Say a Only you are one. You are wonderful. Oh, Jesus. And we declare for the snow. What is like you? Are you over? Who is faithful? Oh, my love, my heart, my life is a testing bone. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know, there are some people, there are some people who say things like, give him five years, give him six more years, everything will be over. I cancel those words. The more they wait for you to fall, the more you rise. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We give this ministry the spiritual push yes, sir. for the next level. Yes, sir. Today you rise above. Hallelujah. I say you rise above. Yes, sir. In the power of the Spirit. Glory to God. Glory. And you keep moving. Hallelujah. I say you keep moving. Yes, sir. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. And all of you that are connected to yes, this yeah, ministry. Yeah, yeah. As this ministry moves, you move. Hallelujah. That is how it works. Hallelujah. All you need to do is connect. Just connect. How do you connect with your money, with your time, with your talent? That's how to stay connected. And say, Lord, this is my covering. Yes, sir. This is where I belong. This is my house. This is my family. I'm committed to it. Glory. As you lift up my man of God, Hallelujah. so I rise with him. Hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. You got to understand the secret of taking advantage of certain spiritual facts. You labor from your own, you seize from your own labor and just attach yourself. That's all. And you'll be amazed how everything around you will turn around. You don't have two fathers. Are you hearing me? Many mentors, but one father. So you know where you're drawing from. May the Lord give you understanding. Glory. And to as many as are connected to the house of treasure, may the same grace work for you. Amen. If you believe that, stand to your feet and shout three amens. Go. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God bless you. Glory to God. God bless you. Glory. Maybe see it. Thank you so much. There's one song I like so much. Vera, you sang it the first, the first day uh, from Joy Celebration. Joyous Celebration. Darling, what's that song called? Vu, Vu something?
Just do that one for. Let's just enjoy that one. Fuso wako. Umsebenze libacha zwi kamala ko. Oh, fuso wako. Oh.
Amen. Very soon, son, your normal Sunday services will be like conference. It won't be long because I'm seeing tremendous growth and addition in this house. In Jesus' name. You believe that? Say amen. amen. All right, you may be seated. No worry, I won't keep you long. You've had enough for, for, for a while. That is, if you buy, I don't know if your sister needs CDs. This is sell CDs. You just buy them. Look for the messages. Go to the wall of um, the church, the bookstore. Get those words. Just hear them over and over. It's, it's a word for you for the season. Amen. Okay, the first time I, I, talk, I talked about personal enlargement, personal enlargement. That's what God gave me for this convention. One, two, and three. So this is the third part of the series on personal enlargement. God is interested in your own personal growth, Amen. spirit, soul, and body. Amen. You see, when you all grow as a, person, as a people, then the family will see expansion. The ministry will see expansion. But it starts from you. There's no expansion without you. Amen. So I told you that rising can be painful. Please just take note of these words. So of the pains you're going through is because God is increasing you. David made a powerful statement. He said, in my distress, I was enlarged. Most times, enlargement comes with pain. The problem is that most people are not ready for the pain. They cry and say, God, stop this pain. And the compassionate God will now wait for you now to mature to be able to stand the pain that comes with the increase. There is no increase without pain. So understand that. Number one, that rising can be painful. So if you want to rise, you must be ready to take what comes with it. Number two, process is never easy. Process. God is a God of process. God never rushes anything. He takes time to make sure things are done the way it should be done. The number three, endure hardness. Be strong. Hardness makes you strong. Tough times don't come to kill you. They come to make you strong, to get you ready for the greater days you have ahead of you. Amen. There's always a blessing, remember, at the end of your endurance. There's always a blessing at the end of your endurance. How, how, how did David grow? He was with Goliath. The whole nation were running from Goliath. But God had prepared Goliath to be the pathway for David to grow and to come out of obscurity into national prominence. That was his own pathway to glory. And you know how he suffered all through with Saul trying to kill him. But he kept pushing. He kept running. He kept praying. He kept loving and respecting the man Saul that was after him. He knew he was anointed. And never took him like a man. He respected him even when he was out to kill him. But eventually he took his place. I don't care how long it will take. You will take your place. So for today, let's look at Genesis 28 from verse 20 to 22. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this that I go, in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be, a, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Wow. This is a prayer of a man who was, who was running for his life. You know, suddenly he found himself away out of the comfort of his home. 
out of the comfort of his environment that he was used to. You know, it's, it, you think it's easy for, for your pastor to leave Nigeria and come to South Africa. No, it's not that easy. It's not easy for my wife to leave Kenya and come to Nigeria. These are very strong moments in the life of any human being. When, you, when you're about to depart from the familiar to the unfamiliar. But that's what I tell you. At times, growth comes with pain. Enlargement comes with pain. Anytime God wants to disturb your comfort, it means he wants to enlarge you. Oh, I didn't hear somebody say amen there. And uh, you know the story about Jacob and his brother Esau and how they did everything and now Esau was annoyed. Esau felt that this, my brother has taken my birthright, he's taken my blessing, now he's away. So he finds himself in a, in a, in a totally strange moment. But he did not know that was God's plan to enlarge him. I told you that rising can be painful. And then he comes and, and he, he never used to sleep with the, with the pillow as a stone. He had never, he was, I'm sure he was comfortable in his own. But he found himself using the stone as a, pill, as a pillow. That is the height of it. But you know, in that pain, God came, but he didn't know it was God until after God had left. He said, God was here, I did not know. Anyway, he now dedicates his future to God. And he says to God, I don't even know what's going on with what I, I just, I just, I just pray that you will help me with food to eat and clothes to wear. Now, he did not know he had a great future, like many of you here. I'm sure while he was praying, he was looking at that stone. If I can use a stone as a pillow, I don't think I have a future. Don't let where you are now fool you. You may be in a, a small, dingy room. You may have nothing. You know, when I was growing up in church, in those days in Christ's chapel, a young believer of about 20-something years, you know, I used to see people, when they say, ah, we need money, and I used to see people stand up, and they come to the front, and I say, wow, will I ever be able to have money? To give to God because I was a youth copper. So I didn't see any future. I wasn't sure how it will pan out, how would all these things pan out, like some of you here. But I came to tell you something relax. God has got you all sorted. Oh, I wish somebody heard what I said. Be at peace. Your future will be stronger than now. I wish I had somebody who tell me this then. I didn't see anything. How? We, we, what will happen? What is next? He didn't say, God, make me rich. He said, God, I pray. Just make sure there's food for me to eat and I can be able to change my clothes. He wasn't asking for any car. He wasn't asking for any mansion. He wasn't asking for anything. He said, God, just help me. I'm, I'm moving on to entirely new territory. Like some of you look at yourself today and you say, well, Satan tells you, this is it. No. If you're still at nothing, if you're still at zero, don't forget God starts with zero. You are still in line. God is just beginning with you. If you believe that God is just beginning with you, Shout amen. amen. He never, he never starts anything without finishing it. You're a, you're a finished product, only you don't know how you will be. He said, let he who has begun this good work in you, he will finish it. Ah, you will finish it. 
Then he finds himself in the house of, you know the story. <laughs> he finds himself in his mother's brother's place, Laban. <laughs> Jacob was a con man, but his uncle was a bigger con. <laughs> The man dealt with him. Everything he labored for. Remember when he said, when he saw the two daughters, the first one was ugly, the younger one was pretty. And the man said, I, I want you, I want the pretty one. You know, that's, that's how all of us are. We want the pretty life. He said, I, I want to start with your pretty daughter. Now look at the, look at the father here. Now, in the, in the Bible days, their culture is that the older gets married first. But at, in this case, the older was ugly. The younger was pretty. So, Jacob being a con man, looks at both of them. <laughs> and goes to the father and says, I want the younger one. I want the pretty one. The father didn't say no. He said, no problem. Work for seven years. <laughs> so he labored so hard with, the, with, with something in mind. Right. At the end of the seven years, this fine girl will be mine. So this labor is worth it. It's always good to work with something in mind. In fact, we work better with something in mind. Knowing that at the end of the day, you will smile. But you see, in our work with God, just know that wherever you are, is beautiful. And at the end of it all, even when trouble shows up, something is behind it. So after seven years, Jacob goes for the fine girl, the father swaps him. Now what I don't know is how he did not know until the next morning. I don't know what happened. Because when he saw the other one, he thought that was what he worked for. And he was still happy. Went home and slept with her it was until morning. <laughs> he found out he was given the wrong one. But that's how God is. God, if God is with you, your beginning must be ugly. See me, yeah? It's better to struggle as a young man. It's better to have nothing as a young man. It's terrible to have plenty in the beginning and end up with nothing at the end. That's a lesson for all of us. If your life is ugly now, it's fine. God starts life with everyone he has business with, with the ugly one. God gives you Leah. I tell young pastors under me, I say, listen, it's okay for nobody to be in your church. Your Leah days are very important. You know, when even there are few people there, you hate them. <laughs> you hate your sound. You hate, you hate everything about your church. And I say, God, did you really call me? You start with the ugly one. We all want to start with the pretty one. Represented a pretty life. We want everything to be in place. Now, after seven years, the father said, well, he swapped it. He said, daddy, you, you, you cheated me. He said, well, it's okay, but work another seven years. And he didn't mind. He did another seven years and eventually got what he wanted. But you know what? When he was about to die, when he was about to die, I said, Bury me next to Leah. Now, he had lived with Leah. He had lived with Rachel. Leah was ugly. Rachel was pretty. He wanted a pretty one. But at the end of having lived with both of them, what did he say? Bury me next to Leah. Bury me next to the one I didn't want. Because he understood that his life was made 
while he was with Leah. Anything that God uses to make you is very important. You may hate it, but God knows and gives it to you because he has interest in you. You must end well. You know, so he's been there for 20 years and God has tremendously increased him. He has enlarged him. Hello? If you're serving God, he must bless you. Don't, don't look for blessing. Look for him. He knows when to bring the money. He knows when to arrange everything. He's a perfect God. Don't be in a hurry to uh, beat your neighbor. Don't compete with anybody. Just keep loving people. Keep loving God. Keep loving everything about God. Keep being a blessing. By the time your time comes, ah, let the devil stand in front of your gate. You will walk out and tell him, get thee behind me. The most dangerous man is a man whose time has come. If your time has come, no ancestral power can stop you. If your time has come, no curse, no wickedness Hallelujah. will stop you. I'm here to tell somebody yes, about the Spirit of God in me. I see many of you. Your time has come. Yes, sir. Go. Tell your neighbor, don't be envious. It's just my time. That's all. It's not that I'm better yes, than anybody. It's yes, just sir. that my time has yes, come. Sir. God has just looked, more, looked on my way. He has just looked on my Hallelujah. face. He's just looked at me because God. he knows what I have been through. Yes, sir. Please, respect any man God has blessed. That's right. I don't mean people who, uh, who made money, who went drugs or something and repent and then come into God with 50 million no, I mean people who had nothing. The ones God raised. When God raised you, there's no pride with it. There, there's nothing with it. You know that you can't get anything except it be given to you. When you see a proud man, leave him alone. He hasn't lent. Because he will yet fall before he lends. Whenever you sense pride anywhere, just run. God is far from a proud person. Shock people. <laughs> Let people not know who you are until they get close to you. Let them think you have nothing. That's okay. You don't have to borrow to improve or to show or to prove anything. You don't have to borrow a car to come to church. You don't have to borrow gold to come to church. You don't have to borrow anything. Just come the way you are. When your time comes. You know, Queen of Sheba heard so much about Solomon. But when she finally saw Solomon, she said, See, what I heard are nothing compared to what I see. Let that be your key. Amen. Don't let people when they see you say, ah, I expected more. Yes, In spite of being cheated, he kept serving. And God blessed him. And then God remembered him. He thought that was where he would die. Now listen, this is heavy. That Jacob did not know he was Israel. Because he was hearing the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No Israel there. He heard his father's prayer. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We know Abraham. We know Isaac. Where is Jacob? <laughs> you don't know who you are. You think you're Jacob? No, you are, you, are, you are Israel. But you see, for Israel to come out, <laughs> Jacob has to suffer. say, 
There are billionaires here. You don't know you are the one. You don't know. Because you are Jacob. You don't know you are Israel. The one that will have a covenant with God is Israel. But where is Israel? Even the angels were confused. Baba God, where is Israel? By now, Israel should have shown up, but we've not seen Israel. Do you mean Israel has not been born? The angels were confused. But they did not know that in Jacob was Israel. Like a woman in labor. Madaboshaya. The woman in labor. You don't see the baby. You don't see. All the troubles Jacob went through was because of Israel. All the trouble you're going through is because of who you are. Who you are is not what we see. We've not yet seen you. So don't die before you show up. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I will not die. No. You've not seen me. Is it, is it Joshua 6.22? I'm not too sure. Just, just put that scripture let me see. I'm not sure it's 6.22. But let me just see if it is. I don't know if it is. Just put it for me. Let me, let me check. Some, some just came to my mind. You don't know who you are. May God help us to be patient when nothing is working. Yes, sir. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, I said, learn to be patient when everything around you fails. You don't know me. I'm still evolving. Never call anybody a failure. Because you have no idea what tomorrow will bring. Just, don't just be satisfied or judge anybody as long as Jacob is still there. Oh, don't mind him, he's a trickster, he's a con man. Oh, when I'm a shatter, he's a, he's a con man, he's a con man. We have no business with him. He's a, he's a wicked man. He's a trickster. Take it in the name of Jesus. May God keep you. Yes. This is life. Why do you think people kill themselves? They kill themselves when they think. That's it. They kill themselves when they think there's nothing more. I've, I've done everything. That's why the Bible says, having done all to stand and nothing is happening, stand. Because while you stand, something will manifest. Help me tell your neighbor, there is an Israel in you. There's an Israel. Yeah, that's, that's the right thing. This just came to me now, and it's for somebody. He says, but Joshua said to the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house. <laughs> Everybody knew Rahab as a harlot. He said, enter the harlot's house, but don't bring out the harlot. Enter the harlot's house and bring out the woman. Whenever you see a harlot standing on the streets, I beg you to see the woman. There is a woman that harlot has sat over. And when the power of God shows up, the harlot will leave. And the woman will stand. The last time you knew her, she may have been a harlot. But when next you see her, she may be a woman of God. There is something inside of you that is too strong. So, 
we're about to see Israel. Jacob did not even know. Jacob did not know. I said, God, why do you do this to us? Why, why, do, you, why do you let us go through so much? Do you know what it means to walk for 14 years just to get what you want? Hard labor. All in a beat to push out Israel. And it's not time to go home. God remembers the covenant. But look at what he's going home with. <laughs> God has blessed this man. You see, he walked into Laban's house with nothing. But he's living with men servants, women servants, with cows, with asses, with goats, with sheep. He had a company. He had a company. Keep working with God. Very soon you have a company. That, that clap is so faint and so confusing. No. You should clap well. Clap well because your future is strong. Tell your neighbor, I don't know, I don't care what I'm going Hallelujah. through. My future is strong. Yes, sir. It is strong. Yes, sir. Be bold about your life. Be bold about your life. You are the center of God's will. He doesn't have the power to leave you. Are you hearing me? He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I don't care how much pain you have to go through. God is with you. Yes, Everything is working towards your personal enlargement. Yeah. Oh, let me ask you a question. Do you want to die like this? I said, do you want to die like this? Yeah. Then stop complaining. Stop complaining. God wants Israel out. And for Israel to come out, men, it will be through much trouble. You see, the first time he made, his, made the food and served the father, he lied when the father said, what's your name? He said, is that Esau? He said, I'm Esau. So he rode on a lie. All through the years he was in Laban's house, he was standing on a lie. And you see, lies have a, an expiry date. Never stand on a lie. It will fail you. But because God was involved, before the lie failed him, God had to move him out to make him pass the test. You didn't hear what I said. Then, he says, it's time to go, sir. And Laban releases him with all his company. And now, on his way back, the reality dawns on him. Oh, I hurt someone before I left 20 years ago. His name is Esau. He began to send presents. When you go home, read the whole story in the, from, from the next two chapters. Time will let me just go through it. But he led the festive, said, Go and appease my brother. While he was with Laban, God was still with his brother. So when, when, when Esau saw all the things, he said, go and tell him that God has also blessed me. <laughs> Listen to me. God can bless your enemies. <laughs> I know you want them to die. But because they are your enemies, don't make them enemies of God. So let them live. That your enemy could be the next evangelist. The one you're praying to, for God to kill. The one that has truly hurt you. Maybe God's next miracle. So stop praying for him to die. Just take your eyes off him. Leave him in the hand of God. And have your peace. There's nothing as terrible as seeing your enemy grow bigger. Because you're fasting and wanting your enemy to die. The more you fast, the fatter he gets. And when you see him enjoying himself, you are dying. And it's worse when he comes to greet you and hug you. Have you ever had your enemy come to hug you? Because he doesn't know, he doesn't know he's your enemy. You are the one killing yourself. And he comes and says, hey, my brother, how are you doing? You say, oh my God. 
and he's smelling so good. Oh my God, this guy is still doing well. Let him go, he will do better. Just face, face your own. Are you hearing me? There is a plan for you. I wish you can hear my... I said, there is a plan for you. The worst thing you can do to yourself is to hate anyone. Hate never helps. Never. Nothing is done by hate. Nothing succeeds by hate. So drop the hate and put on love. Love is not love until you love your enemies. Don't boast when you love those that love you back. No, boast when you love your haters. That's the way of God. I tell people, use love to destroy your enemies. <laughs> Christmas is coming. Go buy them beautiful gifts. And send to them. Imagine how they feel when they untie or unwrap the gift. You mean this gift came from who? Attack your enemies with love. God, please go. Go and appease Esau. I took his place. I stole from him. He's coming. Now watch this. I'm going to end in a few minutes. Watch this. He had all these blessings. He had the two wives. The beautiful one he wanted. Everything was his. his everything was just fine. But there was one problem. How do I face Esau? Because my foundation is faulty. <laughs> May God fix every faulty foundation here. Yeah. Lift your hands. Yeah. Ah. Many of us are victims of faulty foundations, but may God fix them. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You know, you know that feeling when you can't even enjoy your blessing because of a foundation. He, he couldn't enjoy God's blessings because his foundation was about to catch up with him. Yeah. He didn't know what to do. He said, let me... Before he tried to beg Esau, the was in God. Because Esau kept coming. You see, he would have wanted to hear, Esau has accepted the gifts and has gone back home. Then he would say, thank God. But the more he gave him gifts, the more he came. What do you think he was coming to do? He was coming to kill him. For all these years you stole my blessings. I'm revenging. I'll revenge. So he knew Esau was coming. <laughs> he knew Esau was coming. May God allow you to enjoy your blessings. Oh. See, it's a blessing to have money and enjoy it. Many have money, but they can't enjoy. You know why? They are standing on very faulty foundations. Please forgive me. I can't stand in one place to preach. God says, keep going. Please forgive me. I don't know why. If there's any torment around you, may it lift. Amen. You didn't say amen there. Amen. Oh God. Job Adasha, Jacob had been blessed, but he couldn't enjoy his blessings because of his foundation. He tried to fix it. You can't fix it, only God can. Oh, Jesus, hear me. I, I want people to hear me this morning. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, Jesus. Be loose in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Think about Zion. You can't fix the evil because you don't even know how it came. You don't know what your fathers did. You don't know. Where do you start? Only God can fix it. And he will.
In fact, he is. He is fixing every evil foundation that's been plaguing you for so many years. So many years. Oh, Jesus. It's a blessing to be blessed and then you enjoy your blessing. Trust me, many billionaires and trillionaires are so blessed but they can't enjoy their blessing. And all that Jacob was looking for was, I want to be able to enjoy my blessings. But he could not as long as Esau was coming. Please hear me. He wanted to enjoy it but Esau was coming. He was sending to appease him. He wanted to hear. Esau has accepted. Esau is okay. Esau has gone home. Then he would say, thank you, Lord. But that wasn't his destiny. His destiny was bigger than that. It was about, his destiny was about the death of Jacob. He was thinking about how Jacob would live. <laughs> Jacob wanted to leave. God wanted him to die. And he said, the only way I can live is when Esau is happy. His own mathematics. The only time I can enjoy my blessings is when my brother is happy with me. When he's no longer coming to avenge for what I stole. So he was making plans and praying for his own living. While God was looking and saying, no, this Jacob must die. Hear me. Esau was coming and God knew man if Esau meets Jacob he's a dead man what will God do? God said to him remove everything with you until the Bible said Jacob was left alone don't be afraid of being left alone don't be afraid because the presence of some people in your lives may be hindering something important and when you've done everything and they want to go, let them go. Are you hearing me? When your husband tells you, honey, I think it's over. And you know you've done everything you need to do. And he still tells you it's over. Let him go. When a pastor that's been ordained by his pastor wakes up one morning and says, God spoke to me. I got to go. Let her go. Let him go. God will never bless you with people that have left you. Jacob was left alone. And the moment he was left alone, an angel came. What did the angel come to do? He didn't come to feed him like Elijah. <laughs> he came to fight him. Mabarushai. What will you do when God fights you? What will you do when God says, I'm going to fight you? Jacob, you're my enemy. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You must die, Jacob. The angel didn't come to help him. He came to fight him. They wrestled all night. Jacob was too strong. And the angel saw that money was coming. And money should not find him here. He had to do something. He had to break his spine. And gave him a limp. The safest people to walk with are those that have a limp. Fear men who walked off. Love men who limp. Because that limp reminds them of an encounter. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Men with limp will never betray you. Men with limp will not sell you. Men who limp will not gossip about you. Are you hearing me? Men with limp will serve you until you beg them to leave. Then the angel on his way out said, guy, let's finish this business. What is your name? For the first time, you see, you see, Ahasha, in, in repairing his evil foundation, it had to start with the truth. 
there was nothing he could do with a lie. God cannot bless a lie. Each time God wants to bless you, he sees the lie. He holds back his blessing. He said, let somebody remove that lie. And that was what happened to David and Jacob at that time. What is your name? If he said Esau again, he would have failed. For the first time, what is your name? He said, Jacob, wow. He said, now. Okay. He said, now. You are no more Jacob. Ayah. You are now Israel. Ayah. For you shall have power with God and with man. We see the death of Jacob and the birth of Israel. That was when the angels began to rejoice. Wow! This is Israel. The whole world has been waiting for this Israel. But Jacob sat on it. Thank God that Jacob has died. And now we have Israel. And next few minutes, who showed up? Esau. Thank God. The master planner made sure Jacob that he was looking for died the night before. And the person that Esau saw was not Jacob. Hallelujah. Who he saw was Israel. Yes, sir. And when he saw Israel, there's nothing Esau can do to Israel. That's what I tell people. If you're, a, if you're righteous, if you're born again, if Jesus is your Lord and Savior, no devil can hit you. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, no Sangoma will touch you. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior, no conspiracy will succeed. No darkness. The Bible says, it says, it says, darkness cannot comprehend light. The light shines. When the light shines, no darkness can see him. You are bigger than your Sangomas. Stop fearing them. Stop being afraid of people who want to threaten you, who tell you, I will destroy you. No weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. What did Esau do? When Esau saw Israel, he embraced him. That is a large man. Israel is a large Jacob. And that was how Israel came on the scene. And once he arrived on the scene, everything changed. God's covenant kicked in. And from that time until his death, each time he walked in the spirit, it was Israel. When he walked in the flesh, it was Jacob. <laughs> Jacob. When there was the end of his life, the Bible said, Jacob summoned all his children so they can hear what Israel had to say. Israel prophesied over all his kids, set the future for them, and went home. Stand up, everybody. To some of you, your enlargement has begun. But don't forget, don't forget, there is a purpose for every enlargement. God never enlarges you just to be happy. No. It comes with some responsibilities. Joseph was so enlarged. He said to his father, I wanted you guys come and see my glory. But understand why God has lifted me. It's for you. It's for me to come ahead of you and prepare your future. Don't run away from your responsibilities. When <laughs> Your accounts grow. When your bank accounts, when your response, when God maximize, when God multiplies you, don't become a wise man. Remember where you're coming from. You will never ever change. Lift your hand. Jesus, you remain the same. 
the, the direct descendant of Abraham. If only you knew how many years of pain he endured. Disappointments, wars. Until Israel manifested. I just want to thank God for what is done. I just want to obey an instruction from God. Not from your pastor, but from God. You've been giving offerings. You've been doing all kinds of, you've been doing well. Thank God. But God says you must wrap up everything. This is the last service for this year's ownership conference. When you wrap up everything, it means you are now ready to receive. Spiritual things are very powerful when, when you do it right. Say, Lord, this seed is to say thank you for what you've done from Tuesday till today. I may not even know it. I mean, I don't even see anything, but I know that I've established a stronger future. And this seed, Lord, is to say thank you. I'm expecting to hear from you. That's what it is. Tell you what to do. 10,000 rand, 5,000 rand, 3,000, 1,000. We are all at different levels. I wouldn't insist on just one rand. Whatever your level is at, rise up to it and catch it and say, Lord, this is this is my wrap-up seed to say to you, I am ready. If you have it here, you bring it to the altar. If you don't have it here, transfer it. Or by next Sunday, not later than next Sunday bring it and drop on the altar. This is you and God. Whatever you can do at your level, whatever you can do, just come to me and take it from me. Whatever you can do. Quickly. I don't want to waste more than three minutes doing this. I'm not, listen, I'm not cajoling you. I'm just instructing you. So if you have it here, bring it up. I'm going to pray for you. You transfer it. Come on. Sing for me. a minute. Please, don't drop it. Stand with it. If you have it here, you just feel it and return. Stay in the worship. Something is happening. Don't drop it. Once you are ready, just come and stand. Everything should happen in five minutes. So write what you have, feel it, drop it, and just come and stand with the envelope in your hand. Continue, please. Quickly. Never ever change. You are the Lord. That's somebody's envelope. You will never. Oh God, you are the Lord. You remain the same. Let's lift it up.
this swiping machine, if you can swipe now, you may also come forward. Um, can the guys with the swiping machine please step forward? If you can swipe, also join them. If you can swipe your whatever seed you are sowing, sacrificial seed you are sowing. Can we have the swiping machine, please? Just come forward. Come to the front. Bring them all here, please. Keep worshiping God with that thing. You in your are the Lord. You remain the same. You will never ever change. dropped it in my heart. I said, remind them I am the lifter of man. That thing you have in your hand, you'll be amazed. Just for obeying the instruction, you are lifted already. 
You can never go wrong with God. How much more when you give under this kind of atmosphere? Jacob will not die before Israel shows up. Your pain has a reason. And very soon you will understand that you are no longer where they left you. I see grace. I see growth. I see enlargement. That shall be your portion. And for all of you sitting, whatever is in your hand, don't miss out, don't lose out. I wish you can, be, you can learn how to be desperate in the spirit. Whatever you have, you may not have the amount I called, but stand up with anything for this final prayer. God must begin something. Just stand up with the seed and raise it up like this. We're going to pray. Ah, don't just be watching people rise. I was there many years ago and God said, what are you doing there? Go join them. You make God do things for you. You make things happen. Let there be a hunger in your heart next time to be among those in front. That's what God wants to see. Don't be envious. Don't say anything else than to say, God, I want to be among those who, when they ask, I will stand because you've been faithful to me. Fandi Mojaka, lift your hand, everybody. You don't have anything, just stand. Don't just be looking. I hate that spirit that just sits. It's a lazy spirit. Stand everywhere. Lift your hand to God and talk to your father. Everybody is saying something. You say something. You don't have to, Lord. I promise you. When you give me, this is what I will do. Pakabo Shataraya. Two minutes, bring the spirit, everybody. God is with you in your good days and in your bad days, in your summer, in your winter, in your dryness, in your harvest. He's God. Believe Him. Here I am, Lord. I'm wrapping up all that has happened since, Mon since Tuesday. I've come. We've come to the end of it. Now, receive my thanks. Receive my seed. And I want to see what next you will do. Yes, he's a God that responds. He responds to our actions. He responds. He said, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. You are drawing near to him with your seed. And he will draw near with your harvest. Jesus' name we pray. Lift your hands with those seed and pray. Say after me, say, Father, I say thank you for all you've done. I thank you because I believe that my future is stronger. I thank you for all the blessings you have blessed me with spiritually, materially, and financially. Since Tuesday, I thank you. I believe you. As I drop the seed, I look up to you for supernatural harvests. You are the one that multiplies every seed sown. Do so for me now. In Jesus' name. And shout amen. That's it. Just drop it now and God bless you. Those who are swiping, please, the swiping machine is right here to my right. Please, it's just right, sorry, to my left, which is to your right. Please just go there if you want to swipe quickly, quickly under this atmosphere. Just do what you have to do. Let your seed fall to the ground. Come on. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
many machines do we have there? Two. All right. Please, can you just separate yourself to queues and so that we can go, please? Please, can you all, if you don't mind, just walk towards the bookstore? Let's all go and do this there, please. Quickly. Don't go back to your seat. Just follow them. Um, people with the card machine, can you just go with them to the bookstore? Let's do this quickly. Please. Quickly. for the Lord. All right, I'm going to do one thing and then we'll go home. I don't believe, uh, well, it is possible, but I, I also don't believe that everyone here is saved. Let's bow our heads. Is there anyone who came to this service? You were invited? Somebody told you about it? Or you just found out through social media? And you say, Apostle, I'm not born again and I would love to give my life to Jesus. We don't want you to finish a service like this and be lost. God brought you to this conference for this reason. And if I were you, you make this right decision at this moment. If you are not saved, you are not born again, and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be born again, this is your moment. As all heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. If you say, that's me, lift up your hands. I want to pray with you and pray for you quickly. Lift up your hand right now. Right now, where you are. Raise your hand up. Right now, quickly. Raise it up. Raise it up across this auditorium. Raise it up quickly. Quickly. Let me see those hands. Thank you. Thank you. Raise it up. Hands are going up everywhere. Why don't you raise yours? If you are not saved, don't pretend. God is here and God is calling for you. He said, behold, I stand and knock at the door of your heart. And he says, if any man will open, I will come in and make my abode with him. If that is you, join these people and raise your hand. Quickly. Quickly. Or somebody else says, somehow, I, 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 I did this quite a while ago, but somehow I've backslid it. I would love to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, join these people and raise your hand. Quickly. You want to rededicate your life? You want to give your life to Jesus? Now, those of you whose hands are up, I want you to stand on your feet where you are. Stand up. Stand up. Don't be ashamed. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up quickly. Quickly. You raised your hand. Stand up. Quickly. Stand up. If you are raising your hands, stand up where you are. Stand up. Thank you. I want you to close your eyes. Ushers, just get around them so we can close quickly. Close your eyes and say this prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Say, Heavenly Father. Please join them, help them. Say, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity today. I believe with all my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. You died for me, and on the third day, you rose from the dead. I now receive you into my heart. As my Lord and my Savior, forgive me all of my sins and my past. And I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me today in Jesus' name. Amen. While you remain standing, let's pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ and in the resurrection. And believe in their heart. Lord, the scripture says, whosoever sins will remit is remitted. We therefore declare their sins forgiven. Father, wipe their name off the book of death and write it in the book of life. And we pray that the grace that made them stand up will preserve them in the kingdom. Father, we pray for them that the enemy's hands and luggage is now removed from their life. Every curse is broken. And we declare and speak the blessing of Abraham into their spirit, man. Thank you, Father, for saving them. 
In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Put your hands together for them. Now, listen. Our ushers just gave you forms. All of you that stood now, they gave you a form. Fill it out quickly. Do not take it home with you. Leave it with any usher. Leave it with somebody that is in uniform. The person that gave it to you will be standing close by. Once you fill out your details, give it to them because we want to be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision that you made today. Church, can we give them one round of applause once more? <laughs> Glory to God. Let's stand on our feet. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. Lift up your hand. Thank him once more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. What a conference. What an amazing conference. We give you all the glory, Father. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor for all that you have done from Tuesday, even up until today. We return all the glory. No man take it from you, but we return it to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. While you remain standing, I just want to appreciate my son, Pastor Colin and Goshen City Church. I tell you, that, that's a true son. He closed this church from Tuesday till today and told his members, all of you get down to House of Treasures. That's how to honor a father. As you have honored this conference, your ministry shall be honored. I bless you. You know, he came here, fixed everything. I'm in sound. He made sure that everything, his choir ministered one of the days. Son, as you have honored me, you shall be honored. He called me, he says, Goshen City, I told our people, raise an offering. They all put thousands of rents together towards the conference. And he brought it and placed it at the altar. May the Lord cause your ministry to flourish financially in the name of Jesus. You see, people are saying that I'm, I'm, I have favorites. No, I don't have favorites. I just have people who know how to connect to the heart. You see, church, let me tell you something. When, when Jacob wanted, uh, when Esau want, uh, Isaac wanted to bless Esau, he said, go and make me venison such as I love. People, instead of complaining, just connect. Papa said it. All you do is what? Connect. He's been serving here as if he's still part of this house. He's a general overseer. And that's young ministers, please learn these things. Learn these things. Instead of carrying on about your spiritual father, complaining, just serve. Amen. Son, God will honor you. The Lord will honor you and honor the people under you. In Jesus' name. To my daughter, Pastor Kathy, thank you for coming all the way from Cape Town. God bless you. God bless your ministry. God bless your family. Amen. To my son, Pastor KG, Pastor Vero, you two have been amazing. I love both of you. Thank you for, for all that you do. When I'm not here for holding the church, preaching the gospel, thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's lift up our hands for the final blessing. Father, we just want to thank you. I bless your sons and daughters according to the blessing of the Lord which you commanded Moses to bless the children of Israel. Now, may the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord give you peace. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord prosper the work of your hands. As this conference ends today, your miracles begin today. Your enlargement begins today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Papa prophesied three months between now and December. The same way Obedidom's house was blessed. So shall your house be blessed. So shall your finances be blessed. So shall the work of your hands be blessed. Every seed you have dropped in this conference will produce millions harvest. In the name of Jesus, the Lord keep you and preserve you. You will see 2023. By this time next year when we have ownership conference, you will be here in the name of Jesus. You will be here a thousand times multiplied. In the name of Jesus, I bless you all. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. And surely, 
goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. God bless you. I love you all. Amen.